Crisis is not behind us, but we are, as you've said, in a much better position. Uh, natural gas is flowing into Europe. Uh, uh, storage are at a very high level. EDF, which is very important for the uh, central European uh, electricity system, is able to produce at a capacity which is closer to normal. And we see prices today at levels which are much less extreme and less volatile than they were a year ago. This being said, any issue here and there on infrastructure, on, uh, on production, could create some volatility. So uh, we need to be very attentive and make sure that we continue with the energy savings behavior that we've seen during the past winter, both for industrial and household customers. How about storage capacity? Because I know that was an issue. There was actually not enough space to store. Well, in fact, all the storage are full in Europe, but uh, storage full doesn't mean that we, we can uh, operate without influx flux of gas coming uh, real time. In fact, during the winter period, the storage represents about half of the consumption. So it's important. There are at a very high level of capacity, but we need to make sure that gas continues to flow. So given this energy picture you just gave us, what does that mean for the macro picture? Some are quite optimistic, potential, others are more pessimistic. So what's your view? Difficult to, uh, difficult to see. I mean, when I read uh, economic reports, I see a level of stress, worries. People are a bit more on the negative. When we discuss with our customers, when we look at uh, consumption figures, we think that companies have been able to adjust to this very volatile environment and we are reasonably optimistic. So let's look at renewables. Of course, energy has been pushing into very, very heavily over the past few years. Of course, the war in Ukraine has helped um, have gained traction, of course, for, for renewables as part of the energy mix uh, there. So where are we at now? How do we make renewables more competitive? When do we see a real switch happening? We are starting to see the switch happening. And for Europe, there is no other choices. When you look at the situation of Europe, mid and long term, we don't have any fossil or very little fossil energy available. So we need to move for low carbon energy, nuclear in countries where nuclear is a possibility and renewable across the continent. And yes, we are investing massively. We've seen a number of issues in the past months. We've seen, uh, we have situation with the supply chain. Some, uh, some of our suppliers are facing difficulties. But overall, I think the challenge is to continue to invest and as quickly as possible. So how about the offshore wind industry? Of course, you have some activity and we've seen there's been a crisis at the moment for multiple, for a, a, a number of reasons combined together. How worried are you about the impact of this crisis on the energy transition overall? Uh, Mid-term, I'm, uh, I'm not worried. What we are seeing today is a crisis of adjustment. We've seen interest rate increasing very significantly. We have, have a, as I mentioned, supply chain issue. Permitting in some uh, region is being delayed. And some companies were caught in a situation where some project became uneconomical and they have to make announcement which created some uh, worries about the sector. NG was able to go through this without any significant issue and I'm convinced that once this adjustment will have been taken into account by all the players, we'll have again project which will be economical and which will represent strong investment case.